Friends, welcome to the Show to Be Named Later podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Boss, alongside with one of the Storzinger clan that wasn't at the Beer Dabbler at the State Fair this past weekend. I'll, I'll go into detail with you on that, my friend, uh, in a second. But I'm joined by our good friend, Noah Storzinger. How you doing from Kansas City, Missouri? Doing well. It's uh, about 80 degrees here currently. Wow. Um, so that's crazy for February. So yeah. it's get, 60, like, like in the outdoors. Yeah, it's 60 degrees here and tomorrow's going to be five degrees. Yep, yep. Uh, and, and snowing. So, you know, uh, you, you never know. Just like the teams that we watch, the, the, the teams that we support, um, there's a lot of things that we can talk about. Um, you know, for instance, uh, you know, the, the Minnesota Vikings, I, I think we're going to know some more things in the next couple of weeks with the combine coming up. Uh, um, but I, I, I want to put that off for just a second. Um, I want to start with something that we really haven't touched upon all year. And perhaps you, you won't have a lot to say on this, but there are questions that I want to ask you because to me, you are the foul vein of this machine. You're more of an analytics guy. And so sometimes I think that maybe you know more about uh, the way things are done, or I guess the way that the world is, is turning um, more so where I'm just all on emotion where you actually do the fact finding uh, and the fact checking, and you know more of the things that come along with the analytics than anything else. So um, we briefly touched on gopher basketball um, for a while. And uh, you know, some folks had, had thought that this is, perhaps a NCAA tournament team. I, I will still stand by it. They are a big 10 tournament team folks. I'm sorry. That's it. Um, unless they make a huge run in the, in the big 10 tournament, that's right here in our own backyard. Um, but the, the Gophers basketball team, you know, when, when people talk about them being a tournament team, no, they, they got spanked by Nebraska last night. I mean, it wasn't pretty at all. Um, not quite 500 in the Big Ten. Now, I will give their coach, Mr. Johnson, a little bit of credit. They only won two games in the Big Ten all last year, all right, which to me is really hard to do. And, yes, okay, they've improved a little bit. And, um, you know, I mean, I've, I've been hearing crazy things. Oh, Johnson, coach of, the, coach of the year, Big Ten coach of the year. No, sorry. You win four games more so far than you did all last year. I don't think that qualifies you. They're not a tournament team. They have no signature wins. They uh, take their, their non-conference schedule was a joke, whatever. The point that I'm going to make here and then the question that I, I'm wondering, maybe you have an answer for this is um, the reason the Gophers are a little bit better this year is because Mr. Johnson brought in some players. Okay. Um, Hawkins is is a stud. Okay. Uh Ola Joseph is is pretty good. Payne, not quite there yet. Um, but my question is: so let's say the Gophers go 500 in the Big Ten. They have an, an all right showing in the Big Ten tournament. One of the reasons they brought, I believe they brought Hawkins in was because he wanted to prove that he could play at this level. And now it seems like he has proven that. To you, what what does that mean? Like, because with 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 the the portal, and what I mean by the transfer portal is so different from when I was your age. You know, you had to sit a year out. Uh, there are all these really different rules about folks being able to switch uh, in college athletics. It, is this kind of like when we talked about our defensive coordinator? Yeah, he did a bang up job. So now are we going to lose him next year? That's my question is because it's set up so differently, I would imagine that there are going to be other programs that are going to look at a guy like Hawkins, um, Cam Christie, even if he stays for another year at college, because everyone's saying he's going to be a pro player, just like his brother. Um, is it, is it hurting the university of Minnesota? Because now you have players that are drawing attention by other programs and suddenly just like that, they're gone. You understand yeah. my question? Yeah, it, it's hard with Minnesota because it, it's this isn't a program that is as um, 
as elite as some of the other in the Big Ten right now, and 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 that's the hard part is they're not even Northwestern, it. Noah. So I mean, I don't well, know. Right. And that's but, and that's the thing of like if you you know a, a guy a, a team like Purdue that that might have some some really good guys, they're going to stay there. Um, and and I think you know you can have some lower level guys that come to Minnesota, um, prove themselves. It, it, it going to Minnesota in the transfer portal is honestly like a prove it deal kind of thing where it's a prove it play. I, I, you know, I could play at this level. Um, and then they're going to go on to, to, to bigger things. I think um, who was the, uh, was Jameson battle. Who's now with Ohio yeah, state. Ohio state. Uh, um, and actually that's, that's one of my friends, sister's friends, kid. So, I mean, I always, I always wanted it. Darcy, you know, I always cheered for her kid while he was here. I like Jameson battle. Um, but, but you're right. And, I, I want to fault the Jamison battle for leaving the university of Minnesota and two wins in the big 10 last year. Yeah, um, sure. But, but to me, I know they did the transfer portal and everything to help the collegiate athlete. Right. But are we seeing, are we seeing the death of college sport athletics? It, 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 honestly? No. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, I don't know. It's different because like you said, that the, the rules were a lot different before. Um, and the amount of, I mean, I, there are guys that it's, it's a different school every year. I mean, it, it yeah. is every year. It's a different school and it's, Oh, I didn't like the coach. I didn't whatever. And it, it's tough because you can't, you can't build on, on, I mean, yeah, you're going to have your one and dones, but it's hard to build on your teams when there's so much change, I guess, you know, there's so much coming and going. Um, it's, it's hard to, I think, build those, those, that love for, for, for your program a little bit when you've got so much coming and going so many guys that it's, it, it's, it's almost, it, I don't know. It, it's hard to say, but it, it's definitely so much different than it used to be. Um, I think I enjoyed it probably a while ago more than I do now. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But now then my next question is, so, they wanted to play with the big boys. These are, these are kids that are getting paid now. There are no amateur versus pro rules. It, it's all the way across the board they can do, and they're making money. I mean, Caitlin Clark is making more money than a lot of the a lot of the minimum guys in the NBA right now. Okay, so so my deal is, um, do you know where the Pittsburgh Pirates in baseball got their nickname from? I don't. I guess. Okay, because. They had been known to steal players from other from other teams, and that's why you had rules set up in pro sports about free agents, about who you could attack, who you could come get play on your team. And so, what I'm saying is that if if the pros are doing it, and now college is getting paid, and it's it is kind of like a pro uh, a professional. It's forum. free agency. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It totally is. So when are they going to start making rules and, and restrictions so that let's say that the Duke Blue Devils want to be that elite powerhouse basketball school that they always had been, and now you can just pluck whomever you want to have a 10-year a dynasty like a UCLA, which will never happen again, all on recruited guys? I mean – Eventually, you are going to have to set up some kind of perimeter around these rules, don't you think? Or am I just being, once again, an angry old man shaking my fist at the clouds? No, I, I agree with what you're saying. I, I I don't personally, I don't think they're going to change it. I, I think it's right now, especially with these the 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 rules now on the fact that, that college players can essentially market themselves and make money now money money talks and and i think right now is if if a school can get these players that are going to make the school a lot more money i i just i think that's where we're at right now with but it. but however the the pro circus everyone had to set up some kind of uh some is to make it fair all right and i'm not saying across the board it is fair when the yankees can spend and we'll get to that in a second with the poll ads fuck you uh but I, all I'm saying is that eventually, if, if, if you want to play with the big boys, you're going to have to adhere to certain rules that go along with it because it, 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 
it's very troubling to me right now because the Gophers are so far behind the pack, whether it's basketball or football. They are so far behind. And now, oh, by the way, you're going to add extra teams into the Big Ten just next year, right? It, it doesn't – it doesn't seem like a level playing field, you know, and, and the one thing that that you saw in college basketball, when you see a Loyola of Chicago making the NCAA tournament and making a run going to the Sweet 16 and wow, they have a shot because there's so much parity because you have so many different kinds of players playing at small schools because they didn't get whatever. Um, eventually when, when, the Goliaths start picking from the David's basket on on what the product is. Um, you're 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 never you're never going to have another pl- level playing field. And here's the deal: then you might as well just make the NCAA a five or a six conference deal, right? And just put thirty four teams in each conference and just say that's what we're going to do. That'd be interesting. I'd, I'd be down to watch that. Not going to lie. I, I just, I, I think the system's broken and then that's the best way to describe it right now. Big time. Um, Big time. And I just, I, with, with the, the landscape of everything right now, I don't see a, a, a massive change in terms of the transfer portal and all that shenanigans. So. Okay. All right. That brings me to my next point. Um, still on college basketball, but this might be, a little closer and you might have the analytics on this. So I heard, I, I will say, and I, I talk video games every once in a while, the greatest games. Now I will say MLB, the show is the best game of all time. As far as how realistic and just how, as far as a sports game, I think MLB, the show, it just kicks ass over everything that you can bring. And it's unfortunate if you don't like baseball, you might not think that. But if you watch baseball and you know the game, and, you know, I I play football, hockey, soccer. I'm telling you, baseball, MLB, the show is the best, okay? Now, however, there were two games that were even better than MLB, the show, and it was college basketball and it was college football. And it was so bad, you know, I mean, I, I won't go out and buy PS5, PS17 as soon as it comes out. I play my PS system as long as they keep making games, right? So, obviously, they don't make college basketball or college football any longer. So, I held on to, I think it was my PS3, maybe PS2. And I, I played those damn games until they ran out, until they just they they stopped working. Because it was so much fun because you could recruit players in high school. You could do everything to build a, you know, you're, you're one of those guys that likes to build franchise up, right? So you build a school and you get a, a blue chipper that you can make, man, it was so cool. And, and you could do that at the university of Oakland in Michigan and, and do that and like play the conference tournament and then hopefully get a bid. And it, anyway, it was just so cool and football the same way. Right now I heard a deal that with all these young men making and young women making money on college athletics, um, they're going to come out with some college games, right? Yeah. However, they're only going to float. I believe it's 600 bucks to each person. So a guy like the USC quarterback, he ain't going to license his name for 600 bones when he's already in the 6 million dollar man, you know, Lee Majors, Steve Austin kind of deal. So my my question is with with that, how exactly does that work? Because when when college basketball, when I first started playing that on whatever gaming system, they always had the numbers, but they couldn't put the names of the players. But you knew who Sean Respert was playing for Michigan State, right? You knew that. Are they going to just tiptoe over that and and just say, okay, well now you don't have um, this guy, that guy, whatever? I don't, I can't believe that any coaches are going to license their 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 image for six hundred bucks, right? You, you follow me on what I'm going, where I'm going? With? Yeah, I, I think like honestly, for me, if I'm a if I'm a Caleb Williams, you know, yeah, six hundred bucks, it, you know, it, it for them it's low, but um, I. I think the, the, the way of like, even with NBA 2K, right. It's all these guys. I mean, 
man, I've always wanted to just play myself like in yep. the game. So yep. maybe, maybe the, the money, yeah, it's not, you know, these are new games coming out. It's a new thing. They probably can't pay them millions of dollars. So it, it also just could be, Hey man, I don't care how much money it is. I just want to be in the game. Like I, right. I just want to see that. I don't even personally, the 600 bucks thing is cool. Yeah. You can play with, with Caleb Williams, whatever it might be. Personally, I don't care who's in the game. I just want to play right. the, the, yep. the, the college system. I don't care who I'm playing with. I just want to play that, that, that Agreed. version of basketball, you know what I mean? Or football, whatever it might be. Okay. Um, and so like, like that kind of led me and maybe, maybe I'm going down a hole that no one really cares about, but I was, I, I guess my next question with this, because I don't under, quite understand how it all works, but like, okay, let's say Caleb Williams, who I want, I do want to talk about him. Uh, just as a kind of a, uh, a, a cherry on the top on this conversation, but okay. I agree with you wholeheartedly that I just want to play college, college sports on PS five or whatever it is. Um, but let's say that, okay, 600 bucks ain't enough. So I'm not going to sign. You can't use my image, my likeness, anything close to that. One of the things that was pleasing to me when I played these games was, and I think I, I prefaced it with saying that I love going, oh, the coach has got to go on a recruiting deal. He might have a game at the University of Bradley, but there's a kid he wants to check out and that will cause, you know, uh, things on a stamina level or whatever it is, but you have to make it because it's a recruiting deal because that's what college coaches do. Okay. So my question was, so let's say that he doesn't give you the, the, the go ahead to be on but he's going to be gone in a year anyways. Most of those guys are one and done anyway. So my question is, do they have fucking sixth and seventh graders right now that they're giving 600 bucks to, to say, Hey, they're going to recruit you. If you play a career mode and they're in season three and you're only in seventh grade, they're already going to start recruiting you. Is that how far it goes? Because I want to know, I, how does this work? I have no, I have no idea. I, but that's, that's funny. And it's funny too, when, when you look at, uh, when you look at trades now, uh, at least with, e even with, uh, NBA and it's, you know, it was traded for a 20, 39 second round right. pick. And you're like, Oh my gosh, that's a third grader right now. You know what I mean? Yep. Like yep. <laughs> the third grader just got traded. Um, but no, I don't, I don't, I don't know how that works, but Truthfully, even if, interesting even if, question though. Isn't well, it? Right. And and even if players don't sell their likeness, I've seen games do this where you know it, it could be Caleb Williams at quarterback, the skill set's the same, but his name is Sam Brad is right. not Sam Bradford, but you know, it's a yeah. different and see that's what I liked about the old games, is they just made up guys' names. Yeah. I like I say, I don't care either way, you know. Um it just brings me back. And the, and the reason I brought that up was because back in the day, there was a really good coach at the university of Indiana. Um, it was called the general Bobby Knight and uh, Bobby Knight. Okay. So his squad won the national championship with Steve Alford as his point guard, but he'd go into their coaches and say, right now there is a seventh grader that is better than you. His name is Damian Bailey. And, Bailey never, I mean, at least Steve Alford had, I think, a better NBA career than Damian Bailey, but uh, but that was the only way that you ever heard about high school, junior high, whatever it was. But now, I mean, with what I just presented, that brings a whole bigger matzo ball into this whole thing about people getting paid. And, um, you know, I wish it would go to, because I remember when we used to cover the, the Timberwolves and nobody knew who Chris Carr was. And so they didn't have him on NBA live or whatever. And he was like, and, and so I, I brought it up with him and he's like, man, how come they don't have me on the game? I just want to, like you said, want to play with himself. No offense, but he wanted, you know, and I wish it would be like that because yeah, that's all fine and good. You know, if you want to be a 12th grader or a, a, a freshman in college, make a few extra bucks, whatever. But, you know, I mean, all my friends in college were doing things like selling lids, you know, to keep going. They're not getting paid for playing basketball or football. So I would just hope that you would 
appreciate the fact that you're being recognized and you're on a, a game because, you know, the pros are not that easy to do. You know what I mean? So, all right, that's, that's my rant on that. And um, I guess show to be name later fans. We don't have any answers, concrete answers. I am really curious how this, this will all, all play out. So, you know, we talked about how, you know, the weather is, is nice. Uh, doesn't feel like winter at all. Everything is at peace right now with the universe. Baseball has started down in spring training. Timberwolves are off of that terrible all-star break that they had, which seemed like three years and it was only like a week. The Wild are back from uh, uh, all-star break as well. And the Wild are playing a lot, a lot better hockey right now. Everything is in real feel good mode. Um, but I think we should talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves here um, because, and Oh, and by the way, you know, and I know that we, we bring this up quite a bit, but I got to keep doing it because he keeps giving us. So Minnesota, Mike, not Conley, but the guy I work with, he gave you props. I, I had to ask him the same thing. We were talking about the NBA slam dunk championship. And I said, nothing. He had not seen the, the last podcast had not aired. And he goes, you know what, man, the last dunk contest that was any good was Zach Levine. <laughs> it was, yep, yep. So I'm giving you, what do you call them, flowers or whatever. Great minds think alike. That's great. Um, however, I had a conversation with Minnesota Mike this morning, and uh, I think he would agree with me, but I'm, I'm just wondering what your deal is. You know, the, the Wolves come out of all-star break, and it's back to one potato, two potato. One potato, I win one. Yeah, I know, I know it. But they shouldn't have. And I, it might have been a little hangover from All Star Break. That's fine. I'm not going to chalk that up one way or another. But this is what I presented to Minnesota Mike, and um, I think that he agreed with me. And I'm wondering what you're thinking. Um, I've already brought up the fact that to be number one defensively, that's great. But you are not in the top 10 in offense. And, and my, my good friend, Marty said, Oh, but wait, wait, the last five or six games. I said, okay, that's great. Good. But it's not the whole season. And you can get off that. That's fine. But I will say this. If the Wolves don't find secondary scorers on this team, I do believe that they're going to, and they're going to have trouble in the playoffs. And I'm not trying to be a, a doom and gloom guy or anything, Mr. Negative, because last week I was positive. But here's the deal. You can't have Edwards, Towns, and Gobert, who's not even really a scorer, score a majority of your points. And right now, you have nobody coming off the bench and doing it. Not, not really. And do you, do you find this is a problem or not? I think it's funny because... I, I just think, you know, with the teams that we've watched in the past, we, we always know what the, what the issues are. And I think the offense, I mean, when you're one in defense a whole year, it's hard to talk shit about the defense, right? Yeah. Um, so you shift to the offense. The funny thing is, and I have the facts, um, the Timberwolves are fifth in offensive rating for the whole year, just so you know. For the whole, right, right now they are. Is that based on the last six games that they played? Because they were not, they were not before All Star break. They were not in the top ten. It it takes a lot of. I don't know what, you're, what I'm looking at is that all the culmination, everything. It, it is averaged out to right now. They're fifth. I think the defense overshadows the offense, obviously, with how good the defense has been. Um, so it's just funny to look at talking about the the offensive problem when. You know, you're still first in the West. You're fifth in right. offensive rating, and well, yeah, they do have some now. issues, right? And it's it's it is tied uh, with OKC, but um, no a secondary score. I mean, I, we've said it the whole year; they need one. Um, I, I like Monte Morris has been playing well in this backup role. I've seen he's he's playing a little more with Conley, which I think has been interesting. Um, had a good game the other day, but um, no, the, this team needs a score. I I don't know what kind of level they're looking at on the buyout market, something will happen. We have I don't, I don't think that they're going to do any, anything, but, but my we point open was your spot. So what's that? We have two open roster spots. They got to fill it. They're going to sign someone. Okay. All right. Well, because here's the it, thing. I mean, Nas it, Reed has, well, has just say, it's, it's not going to be a microwave score, like a, 
a Jalen right. Noel, but it, you're looking at a three point like a Joe Harris kind of. I'm I'm looking for a guy that could maybe score in double figures is what I'm looking for, and and I think that you need that because you know slow mo has gone away offensively completely. Naj Reed has not been consistent since the beginning of the year. Like I, and I don't know. And you know, I talked to Mike about this in the morning. Like when he gets his feet set, you know, it's going in, but it doesn't seem like he's in position all the time. It seems like a lot of his shots are forced. Um, and, and then it's like a 50, 50 kind of deal, but he just hasn't brought the same kind of fire that he did in the beginning of the year at all. Um, now you got, you know, shake Williams is gone. So what? He never did anything anyways. Um, Troy Brown gone. Never. He, I think he had one game, right? Um, Conley sometimes gives you that, but he's not going to, he's not even going to score double figures every night, you know? So the, the one guy that there, there were rumors that it hasn't happened yet. Um, that I know that they, I think they want to sign is, uh, Mr. Marcus Morris. Yeah, I, I'd seen that. That that's been on the wish list for I think a, a couple months, right? Yeah, and and I, you know, he's he can get you. I mean, he, he can shoot the three. Um, he, to me, it's like an upgraded. If you remember James Johnson, yep, adds you a, adds a lot of edge that I think helps in a in a tough playoff series. Maybe gives you a little bit of grit, kind of Patrick Beverly type type guy, right? Um, I just I don't I don't know what kind of guy there. I, I can't remember right now who's on the uh the bio list, but um I mean a Joe Harris can can get you a couple of threes a game. Right. Um Marcus Morris he again he can shoot the ball, he can play defense. Um so I don't I think what right, right now you're looking at is I think they struggle with the three point shooting spacing sometimes on the bench with with what they the guys that they work in. I, I wouldn't mind a Joe Harris, a guy who, you know. Let them live on the perimeter and shoot. Three. I wouldn't either. Yeah. And I think um, that's what we're trending towards. You know, I, I, like I say, I, I, I'm not trying to, um, I'm not trying to be Mr. Negative right now, but, but all I'm saying is that I don't want to go in the playoffs and, and there's still a lot of teams as we talked about that just, you know, it, there's a difference between national media and fans. I guess what I give a fuck about, what the average Joe at the Staples center thinks about the wolves. No, I don't national media. Give us a little love, but there are still a lot of teams that think, uh, or players on different teams in the NBA that think the wolves are going to be done in one round this year. Okay. And, and that's what is concerning to me right now. When I say that we need secondary scoring, because I don't want to see a deal like the third quarter against the Bucks, And I know that was the first game back from all-star, but, but we've seen it before where we've had substantial leads and suddenly nobody can score. And, and here's the deal. We've known that towns has had nights where they ain't going down, right? We've seen it with Edwards where he's making bad choice, whatever. So if, if you take either one of those guys out of the equation, as far as scoring your points, um, I, I think that's going to be a problem moving forward. And no, it, I it has, that's all I'm saying. It will. I mean, I, I think it helps when, I mean, when it, when is offense the best? It's when the ball's moving. Yep. Um, and I, and I, I think that's great to, to get a, a Molly Morris in here to, to move the ball like a Mike Conley will. So at least you have that on the bench unit. Um, and I like that McLaughlin's your third string. I mean, Mane goes down, Conley goes down. You still got a guy who can come in and move the ball. And I think yeah. that'll be the key at this point because, yeah, I mean, Edwards and, and Towns, you know, they can be ISO scorers. But again, offense is the best when the ball's moving. And and I think that's that'll be the, the key right now. And we see when offensive ruts happen, it's typically the ball's not moving, right? Yep. Um, so well, I really yeah. then, you're, then you're dribbling into triple teams and you're playing ISO that just does not work. Um, and that's, that's what, that's what I worry about. The other thing is, and, and I don't mind saying it because, you know, we did have, uh, I believe one, maybe two guys that made the Johnny Voss rule, but I'm, I'm going to go back because it, as of right now, nobody is on the Johnny Voss rule that you have to um, really not like, 
at least three people on, on your squad. Jade McDaniels has officially made my list. And I'm going to tell you why I'm not, it's not because I'm a hater. Well, I, here's the deal. Offensively, he is a non factor when we want to talk about, and this is a guy that we thought could not be take a huge portion of the, the scoring load, but this guy is an absolute non factor. He does nothing on the offensive side at all. So, okay, you go, okay, well, Johnny's always playing the offense versus defense. And what percentage? Oh, you're in the top. You're number one. Jade McDaniel was signed. We gave him the money and locked him up because of his defensive prowess. Okay. Are you seeing that this year? Not much. And, and you take away any kind of, it's like four on five basketball offensively when he's on the floor because he does nothing. If you take away the fact that his defensive reasons were why we were so excited in his fourth year, you would think that he is, A, I don't think he's very smart. Second, I don't know if he's as good as advertised right now. I really don't because his defense is not where it was last year going into his injury for punching the wall. Well, it's not. It's absolutely not. But the fact that we've seen him be successful, he's got the talent. He's, yeah, he absolutely has the talent. So it's not that he's not good enough. It's just right now he's in a massive slump. He absolutely, I mean, he had the worst statistical week of his career this past week. Um, and yeah, he's going to have to figure it out because honestly, you play yourself off the floor in those situations, like playoff situations um, where the, I mean, so I don't know. I, I think he figures it out come playoff time. I think that's when the light shine bright. I think, a guy like a Nas Reed, a Jada McDaniels, I think they turn stuff around personally. But yeah, he's absolutely been a borderline atrocious. So. Completely disappointing. Completely disappointing. And and that's why I said, I mean, the the second part that I said was I don't think he's as good as advertised, but you're you're right. He does. There's no reason we wouldn't have signed him for what we did and locked him up if we didn't think there was something there. However, the former point that I brought up was I don't think he's a very smart player. And and there's a difference between being young, dumb, and full of calm or whatever and just not understanding what's going on. I there, There's just some things about Jaden McDaniels that, that have caused me. He's pushed me into putting him on that list, and I don't want him on that list. I want him to contribute and participate – for what we what we're what we're paying them for, so that's that's my whole deal. It's my Timberwolves rat. They're still in first place. That's great, um, but I'm as time goes on, I'm getting a little a little worried. Noah. well, it's, you know, I get it. We're getting close to play. Like we, I think at this point, we just want to hit the playoffs. Like we we are done with the regular season at this point. Like I'm ready to just I want to see what this team does. Um, because we we've been so excited and this has been by far the best year of Timberwolves basketball I've ever seen yeah. in my life. <laughs> and we, I, we're, we're just antsy when we we're, we're, we love our team and we, we, we just want to see them succeed. What was what the record right now? 40 and, and how many losses? I think we're 40 and 17, 17. Yeah. 40. Is that what it is? And that's yeah. what OKC is, even though OKC has won six in a row, right? And, yep. But we won five of six. Okay. Um, we got San Antonio, I believe, tomorrow night. I do know that not all of our games I, are 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 going to be the Bucks every night or the Clippers every night. Like, I, I, I think that we still have somewhat soft kind of schedule. Is that we're, right? Uh, yeah, I think we're like 22nd or 21st in the easiest schedule. Okay, C's ahead of us, unfortunately, but yeah. you never know. Okay. All right. All right. Very good. Very good. All right. Um, I think we're going to switch now to uh, Minnesota Twins baseball um, because it is glorious, even though it's 80 degrees down there, it is 60 degrees here in Minnesota. But um, seeing the guy, I don't know if you catch any games on Bally's at all. You you have Bally's down in KC? Well, I do. Um, now the, the next televised game isn't until like halfway through the month but it's also spring training so but i've I, i've been listening i i listen to all right. the spring training i've just been happy to have baseball back 
<laughs> okay, I, I agree. Um, but there is that in, you know, you know what? Uh, show to me name later fans. I don't mean to beat a dead horse. You know, I mean, some of the things we talked about with the wolves already, we've already talked about on this, uh, um, on, on this, on this podcast, we're going to talk about the same stuff we talked about because there's been some things that have come to light. I believe Noah has some, uh, some, some twins news to share as well. Um, but here's, I'm, I'm going to get on my soapbox again. Um, because some things have come to light in the last week, um, both by owners, both by local media, so you saw that uh, Mr. Poled came out on WCCO and and basically did this to what me, a, right? Right? What a joke of a of a person of an owner. I I knew where you were going with this. I mean, we okay. don't for, we don't we don't talk about stuff before we we just record. Yep. Um, I, I knew exactly where you're going with. I, I saw the interview. Oh, I it gets better it. though. But go ahead. What a how can you have the year that you had? spend the money that you spend and then completely, like you said, yep. just give a big fat middle finger to the, the <laughs> fan base. You do not deserve to own the team. You do no. not deserve to be in Minnesota. Sell the fucking team. He, he had no problem doing it. He slap in the face and, and it was so insulting and said, we're just not, we're just not going to do it. And there were so many different ins and outs and what have you about it. But to me, it was, it was so insulting and, and there's a few of the layers because as George Costanza said, it's just like an onion. The more you, the, the more layers you peel, I forget what he said, the dirtier it gets or something like that. I, the, the more it stinks. Okay. And that's what I'm going to say. There were so many things about it where he said, we're not going to spend 30 mil on this guy. We're not, it's just not in the budget. Now, first of all, I believe the poll ads just sold their car dealership for like $8 billion. So it's not like they don't have the money. Okay. Um, and as, as these things are going on and he's talking and he brought up so many different things and uh, that I'm going to get to in a second, but then on Sunday, as I always do, I, I like to eat brunch by myself and read the sport, the star tribute on the sports page. And Lavelle Neal had a, a column in the paper about Twins fans, just get over it. Stop pouting. This is what it is. The poll ads made it very, very clear that they're not going to spend money, that they're not ever going to push it to the next level. This is what you need to concentrate on the team that we have. And I think he did a little tongue in cheek, but he basically said, you got to stop bitching. And I, I'm not going to stop bitching. I'm not going to stop complaining because it was a slap in the face. Go ahead. It, it, no, it, it absolutely was. I think the issue with that was the you know saying the twins or the poll ads aren't going to spend money. The the hard part is we we've seen them start to 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 do more. We we signed Carlos Correa. We're signing Bucks into this deal. You 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 know you you extend you traded for Pablo Lopez and immediately extended him. Like you're doing stuff that we had never seen them do and you're getting excited and it's like okay the budget's expanding we're doing more we're going after these guys and actually getting these guys and then you immediately you have one of the most successful seasons in recent in, in decades at this point you win your playoff series everyone's happy and you immediately go back and say we're slashing everything we're not doing this we're not doing this i still think they put a great team on the field however Good God, you can't tell your fan base that you you just no, you, you can't tell we don't them. care about you. We don't care about you at all. And my my point is okay, because there were so many things that he said, like I say, that you peel the onion and the more it stinks. Um, first they brought up the television deal. Okay, well, fine. It that's done now. So fuck off. Then they brought up um, well, there's still some things that we got to figure out from COVID because I think the twins were one of the only major league ball pl clubs that paid their employees during the whole deal of COVID. Fine. COVID's done. Figure it out. You still own a major league fucking ball club. So it, I'm sorry, it's 2024. I think you can't even put that into the, into the, 
Nobody's going to accept that any longer. Okay. Then they went into, he, he said, well, we're just not going to spend on 30 mil on the guys that everybody's talking about right now. Now he didn't say, and we're going to get to that in a second. He didn't say specifically who it was that they were talking about, but you know what? The foul beans, they might be able to figure out if there's that one guy that's that, that happens to fit. They'll make a deal. Okay. Whatever. Then he tried to liken the twins to the Tampa Bay Rays. Once again, it's just a slap in the face. And, and here's the deal, Mr. Pole. That, the, that's all fine and good. You want to say that the, the, the Tampa Bay Rays have done incredible things with what they've been given, but they've never won anything, my friend. It's like everyone, Moneyball is the best movie of all time. No, it isn't. The team that beat Moneyball was the Twins, so fuck off. Okay, but here's the thing, man. The Tampa Bay Rays shouldn't even be allowed in Tampa. It's always the team that you're talking about getting rid of and going back to Montreal or going somewhere else. Like, So the thing that's different about Minnesota Twins fans and Tampa Bay fans are Minnesota's got fans, okay? We saw that. Right. The Rays have no fans. They have no stadium. They have no reason to really exist. And all Polad has done by what he said on CCO last week, in addition to slapping you in the face, was saying, I can alienate you so much, okay, that it doesn't matter if we have a nice ballpark or, you know, we've got a lot of guys that are up and coming and they, that's fine. Then you better be fucking right that the, the young guys are going to, because you will look ridiculous if that doesn't happen. And here's the thing. Minnesota Twins fans are different than Vikings, Timberwolves. They will go away. If you insult them enough and don't put a winner on the field, they will stop coming to your ballpark. And which is different because Tampa Bay, even though they don't win world championships, they go to the playoffs and no one comes to watch them. And that's because of a lot of different things. But I'm telling you, Polad, that that is what will happen in Minnesota if you continue to treat us like a bitch. These are comments that get like get you whenever you show your face, you get booed. And Twins fans typically aren't, you know, right mean. But I'm sorry, we we see Minnesota fans get get a little fussy. Uh, and I I think you know if if this continues and the fact that these comments came out, it was essentially the middle finger to you. If this guy's shown on the jumbotron, he's getting boot. He's getting. Well, that's boot. just it. Do you think he's actually going to show his face at Target Field? I, I don't, especially if they don't win games this year. Well, and 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 that's the thing. And I will say, I'm glad, not glad these comments came out, but the fact that that he had said them, and we know where this is coming from. At least I know who to blame because I'd hate to be blaming the Felvines right now for they've been doing all they can right now. Mm -hmm. I still think they put a great team on the field. But I'd, be hate, I'd hate to give them all the shit when it's really not their fault. So at least I know that I can give a big middle finger to, to pull that. Well, and, and, and there's two points that I want to make on this is why I'm, I'm so passionate right now and why I'm so fired up. Number one, the Milwaukee, we talked about the Milwaukee Bucks in the, in, in the past podcast. When winning a championship, you have a very small window. Right? I mean, a year, two years, maybe three or four. The Bucks said, our window is going to close if we continue going with this guy, even though we have one of the best records in the NBA. They decided to cut it, okay, because they figured that their window would completely shut if they continued with Adrian Griffin, right? Now, the Twins. Obviously, it is really, really hard to win a World Series championship, okay? Um, and the Twins in something like 20 years ain't won a playoff series until last year. So your window was going this way, and you don't know for how long. But are you following me here? You're saying, I'm, I'm not saying that the Twins and the Polads have to spend money like they did last year because they spent a lot of fucking money, okay? And you can't continue to do it. It's still a business, Okay, you can't do that every year. However, 
If you think that you have a shot at winning a world championship, you don't go, you know what? We're going to, we're going to rest on our laurels because we won a fucking playoff series in 20 years. And now that means everyone's going to come to the ballpark and we don't have to do anything to actually show our fan base that we are in it to win it. Okay. And so, like I say, the middle finger goes up, whatever it is, but your window then may close because like I said before, if your young guys don't prove that they can that they can handle this mess, then you look ridiculous, okay? And it's going to drive people away from the ballpark. And there I said it. That I, I honestly believe that. And I don't want our window to close. This is the time to jump so you make one move that says because we don't have the same pitching rotation. We don't have the same offense. I don't think we'll see. I think it's better. You think it's better? Okay. Obviously, I think we have a better bullpen, but we only were eight, I'm sorry, nine games better this last year than the year before. But my 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 point is I, I don't I don't want the twins to lose this window and have it slam shut when when you have you have an opportunity or you had an opportunity to improve and to say to twins fans everywhere, look guys. We're, we're not only happy with just winning a playoff series, we're going to go to the next series and we're going to go to the World Series and we're going to do this for a number of years. Okay. And obviously you can't spend that kind of money every single year, but you can do it one more year. Right. And, and I like, can you imagine a Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery on this team? Because we cut 35, 40 million from the payroll this year. That's the money that gets those kind of guys. Yep. I, I mean, like I said, Best bullpen in the MLB, in my opinion, right now. Better offense. You add a younger pitcher than than Sonny Gray was in a Blake Snell, a, a Jordan Montgomery. That team's gonna go far. They absolutely are. I and I still think they do. But like I said to your point of like, this was the year to say like, hey guys, you you like that last year? Boom. Here's Jordan Montgomery. Right. Like, let's go further. He just won a World Series. Let's take it. Let's have him take us there. Yep. So. Yep. And, and, and this is, here's my second point on why I'm so passionate about this is because based on what Paul had said on CCO, I don't think he's talking about this as a one year deal where we're, we're, we're not going to spend money. I think his plan is the next three years. We're not, we're not going to do it. We're just not going to, we did it one year for you. We gave you a playoff victory in 20 fucking years. And now we're, we're cool. We can hold out for another 20 years. And if that's the case, man, what, what are we doing, Noah? Why are, why are well, we spending well, so much time on this? You're, you're, you're going to lose the Falvines. They, they've been doing so well, and I'm sorry, but if there's like, no, you can't spend this money. I mean, it's like, okay, I'm going to go somewhere that they're going to let me spend money yep. and put a winner on the field. They put a winner on the field, but when you get so much – constraints like you don't want to work you don't want to do that anymore so I, right. that worries that was me why bit. Derek Jeter left Miami right because he was under the impression that okay one year two years we suck but by year five you're gonna let me spend money to bring players in here to win games and they never let him do that you know okay. that it's kind of been the the MO for the, the the Florida Marlins not the Miami Marlins for, um, for a long time okay last thing because then I want you to give me Major League Baseball or Twins News, if you got it. But so I saw this um, based on everything we're talking about. I think it was a day ago. Uh, Major League Baseball Players Association perhaps have a gripe against Mr. Polad because in the collective bargaining agreement, you can't talk about player. Now, he didn't use, I think it would be hard for this to stick in any kind of court system or whatever, but apparently the players association is thinking that he overstepped his bounds because he said the players that twins fans are talking about, and we all know who they is: Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery, Bellinger, who's now been signed by the Cubs. And then, uh, uh, Oh, I like him, Matt Chapman, right? Okay. Those are the only 30 million year guys that you're talking about, right? So the baseball, uh, Major League Baseball Players Association thinks they have a gripe that he talked outside of and might have 
hurt their client's chances or whatever. I Like I say, I think that would be completely impossible to get to stick. Uh, but your thoughts on that? Well, it's, it bodes well for free agents wanting to come to Minnesota at that, at that point. Um, no, I, I, like you said, it's not, it's not going to stick, but Hey man, if it's more shit that we can throw and pull at and get them out. I, great. Because dude, the, you know, how many sell the team signs they are going to be this year. And it's going to suck because we're going to be winning. We're, we're going to win games this year. And you're going to see signs that say, sell the team. I mean, yeah. but that's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. And the one thing is that you have to be careful about is like I said, I, Tampa should have been gone 10 years ago. There's no way that Tampa should have a baseball franchise, um, especially in that mausoleum that, I mean, that is worse than the metronome. But when, when you start talking about, sell the team, this or that. Um, and, you know, especially if it gets, if it gets nasty, um, then you have to worry about whether or not the Minnesota twins stay in Minnesota. Yep. And, and yep. that's, that's not a, a bridge that I want to burn anytime soon. No, you're right. I mean, it's, it's tough. It, it just, you, you see the difference in ownership going from a Glenn Taylor to a Mark Laurie, Alex Rodriguez. And I just, I, Wish I could be that uh, that positive with oh just bring in these guys and they're gonna fix everything. But right, no, you're right. It's it's definitely a because I mean there, there there's been those talks before. I mean it's 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 gonna happen now. Um, MLB did you know we can transition here. MLB did uh, announce that they are pretty close, not pretty close, but in the near future gonna expand to 32 teams. And they name drop two cities. I'm curious if you can name those two cities that they okay. might expand to. Montreal's got to be one of them. Really? Nope. They're the I best don't... baseball fans. In... Are, are you kidding me? <laughs> Buffalo, who has a triple A squad, okay? They they play exhibition games in Montreal. These are not these are not teams that are associated at all with Montreal. I'm talking about exhibition games right before the season starts. They're sellouts. Everyone goes nuts. They play Buffalo Bison, I believe, which is the AAA team. They play games in fucking Montreal, and everyone loves it. So you're going to tell me that Montreal is not a not a candidate? I think it's tough with I, okay. I'll let get into you. another country. It's tougher, but yeah, okay. I like one city. The other city, you know, it's whatever. I'm going to say uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. It's a good one. It wasn't name dropped, but I, that's that's a North Carolina or Charlotte is definitely one of those. Yeah, Charlotte, uh, yeah not Raleigh. I'm sorry. Charlotte, I meant Charlotte. Okay. Yeah. Uh, shoot. Uh, well, it couldn't be Buffalo. No. Okay. Um, I don't think it's Oklahoma City either. You're, uh, you're, yeah. you're close, but no. You're going to have to tell me because I'm. So the one that I'm a fan of is Nashville, Tennessee. I like I've heard that. that. Yep. Um, the Sorry, other too one, close to St. Louis. Well, <laughs> the other one, the other one is uh, Salt Lake City is really pushing for a team, and that's the other nope. one. Nope, nope. Sorry. Um, and I'm not a hater because the Minnesota Twins AAA affiliate used to be the Salt Lake City Buzz. Okay, but when I think baseball, I don't think Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm sorry. Well, I, I don't think he lost. I'd prefer that over Vegas. I'm just like. Well, now Oakland's still making a push, though, right? Like they, I mean they, they're pulling out all the stops, and I, I hope they win it, man, because you know, just judging by All Star games, uh, I don't want any more pro, pro deals in Vegas. But now, sticking with baseball, like you said that you had Minnesota Twins news. All I right. Do. So, uh, you know, we we shit on the poll ads and everything. Uh, the Twins made a trade today, a couple hours ago. Really? It is for a major league guy. Um, a good old right-handed outfield bat from the Dodgers. We got Manuel Margot coming to the Twins. Okay. Um, former what do we Ray. Give up? Uh, well, the the thing I love about the Falvines is when they make trades, they're thinking of the future as well, and they just continually replenish this prospect pool. When you're getting guys of this talent of, of the major league level, you typically don't think you're getting prospects back, and they always do. And we got Manuel Margot and Cash, so we don't have to pay. I don't know how much Cash 
Right. Um, Margot's making about 10 mil and he's got an option for, I think 12 next year. So we could have him next year. Um, and then we got a, a prospect. I don't, I don't, I haven't read much on, on him, but, um, a, a single A third baseman, um, good guy from Dominican Republic, but I heard the twins were looking for a, uh, right-handed outfielder. So they got that Margo. I mean, you figure he's going to, he's just going to fill in patchwork kind of deals. Yeah. He's your, he's your, uh, Michael A. Taylor replacement. He plays, uh, he, you know, he's got a good bat. Um, now I would say a little more power than Michael A. Taylor, but the guy hit 21 homers last year. Michael Taylor had 21 homers last yeah, year. Right. Uh, Margot has not, has not. Margot play center. Yeah. Yeah. He'll play okay. center. He'll play, he could play the corners. Um, okay. not, not a, as a, a, a big, uh, glove, I think is, I think Taylor probably plays a little better in center. Yeah. Um, but definitely a guy who, who can hit some home runs, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll get on base. Um, Got a good glove. He's a big, good athlete um, and a good clubhouse guy too. So we gave up Noah Miller, who uh, we you know we drafted him pretty high a couple of years ago, but it's just been kind of shit in in yeah. in single A. Um, he's a, they're saying he's a major league ready defender at this point in the infield, um, but his bat has he's just never been able to figure that out. So okay. to to so- get to get Margot a prospect and to have the Dodgers pay for him and just give up. Noah Miller to me is just another steal of a trade. Okay. Okay. Uh, my question, we talked about the younger, the younger guys. Uh, does Austin Martin or um, your boy? Uh, Brooks. You know, yeah. Do they make the trip North for opening day or do we have to just sit back and wait? So if this was, to me, like this completely – Trevor Larnock is done. They need – I think they need to – they need to trade him yeah. at this point because he's not going to have any playing opportunity when you get Margot in here. Um, if Margot was not Does on the Larnick team – Do you get anything for Larnick? I don't even know anymore. Probably not. No, Maybe I a know. low level – I don't know. It's sad. But, um, you know, now that you added Margot, if you didn't add Margot, I think – Austin Martin makes a trip north, um, and I'm really excited about it. I think he's really versatile. He, you know, good defender. Uh, the bat's starting to come around. I'm excited, um, but he'll be the he's just good depth at, at AAA. Brooks Lee, I, I don't think so yet, but they they had said, man, like, boy, he's, he's ready. Yeah, he's I know. Up. There's a lot of people talking about him, and you know, I I still have some reservations. I, I like Julian, obviously. I like Walner, obviously, but I still have reservations because you don't know if there's a sophomore slump or like I say, I mean, Walner looked clueless in the playoffs. Um, so, I mean, that's interesting. Um, last thing I want to bring up, I do want to give a show to be named later. This this might be one of the first awards ceremony type things for the show to be named later um, podcast, but I want to give an award to a member of the Minnesota twins uh, spring training team for, and the award is for uh, taking it all in stride and just being a good sport about it. We have a relief pitcher on our team by the name of Scott Blewett. And for that guy to have a sense of humor, you know who I'm talking about? No. Scott okay, Blewett. Well, it doesn't matter. The fact is he's a relief pitcher and his last name is Blewett. So, you know, and, and that's not even mine. I got I got to give credit to a, a friend, Morley. I saw that. He, it was his joke, but I thought it was hilarious because, you know, in the age of Minnesota Twins or any Minnesota guy giving up something in the worst possible time. Can you imagine twins going with their big guns? Scott blew it here in the night. You know, so um, I just, I, that tickled my fancy just a little bit. I love it. (laughs) Right. I, I know we gone a little bit longer. However, there were some technical difficulties. Uh, I don't think AT&T had anything to do with it necessarily. Um, But you got anything else for us? Uh, 
on this Monday? No, I don't think so. All right, man. Well, for Noah down in KC, you got JV in Minneapolis. You've been watching the Show to Be Named Later podcast. Thanks for tuning in.